What's up, family? Yes, I am. I am the American dream. All right. Peace and love and happiness to you. Peace and love and happiness to you, family. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel. So excited. So here's the fried chicken with the garlic chunky mashed potatoes. And I threw some Hawaiian rolls in there in the mix. Alrighty. And per usual, I'm going to finish my diet. Cola. All right. Let's dig in. What are you all doing today? So since we're on this theme, I meant to do this earlier in the month of February, but you know, like most people would believe, myself included, that every month is Black History Month, not just February, not just February, but in special honor of February. Uh, here I'm on the book. So I don't know if any one of you have read this book. If you have completed reading this book, let me know what you thought about the whole entire book. But no spoiler lights, because I just picked it up. And I'm going to, I should put it right here. I'm going to put it right here. And this is The Plot to Kill King, The Truth Behind the Assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. This book is by Dr. William F. Pepper, Esquire, former attorney of the King family. So I couldn't put this book down. Um, and I'm highlighted an area okay so i couldn't put this book down i started reading it i picked it up yesterday and i was like um omg i should share this book with people at the start of february i was thinking to share a book i wasn't sure which book i was gonna think i was gonna share my the other martin luther king book that i completed reading in 2019 but when i came across this started reading through it i was intrigued Ultimately, there are many victims in this case. Dr. King, James Earl, Dr. King, James Earl Ray, their families, and the citizens of the United States. So, and then da -da -da, the assassination of Martin Luther King and his cover up extends far and wide. So like I said, the guy that wrote, uh, published that book there has been the long-term attorney for the King uh family so it's been interesting over the years just to hear this whole entire remember i told you my sister thinks i'm a conspiracist but i just always give things a little bit benefit of the doubt and i'm always open-minded so when that book surfaced in its on its own i'd heard about the book but it took me a while to get to it right because i'll be having my own little reading list that i gotta complete and so i'm like like most people, even if you kind of read the blurb at the back of the book cover, or if you kind of Google the book or probably YouTube the book, you hear a little bit about the book, right? The book is um, going into talks about Martin Luther King. Uh, it's going into depth on Martin Luther King's assassination and that um, it was an inside job, which most people would argue we already knew that. If you're like me, a conspiracist. And so it's also going into detail trying to talk about the fact that Earl, J James Earl, or Earl James, Ray, whatever his name is. I always get his name mixed up with uh, the other one. But um, it talks about him, see, over the years, and I won't talk about it as, it as it stems from the book because I don't want to spoil the book for anyone that's going to pick it up. 
But over the years, there was so many conspiracies behind the dude that assassinated Martin Luther King, right? They were like, it's either he worked for a, all um, the whole supremacist group or whatever, or he was part of the government allegiance. And so now delve viewing into this book, you're kind of like, and you know what? I think right now is a superb moment for me to like call my sister when I think about it. I let her know, there you go. My conspiracies, she calls them conspiracies, but I'm always like, what if, right? What if I paid off? Because years later, you're now hearing of a whole different um, death when it comes to Martin Luther King. Oh, I mean, he was assassinated, but not different death, but y'all get it. The fact that some of the mysteries, if I could put that there, because this is out in the Ethernet. Ethernet. It's out in the internet world. But some of the mysteries was that he was not assassinated. I mean, he was not assassinated. Now, that's a conspiracy that never needs to go out. Uh, but no, the fact that he was assassinated and some of the uh, concerns was that he was still alive. They had time to save him. So some of the, the talks is that he didn't die on spot, on location. But um, these are the garlic mashed potatoes. I like, I don't like any gravy on my potatoes for the most part, especially if they're just fresh made potatoes, not from the powdered potatoes. And the reason is because, as you see in the recipe, I put cream cheese in there, I put some butter in there, and I put um, the whipping cream in there. You put milk and um you don't have to put sour cream in there but so instead of putting my sour cream on top of the mashed potatoes i just blend it in there and it gives it to me a nice consistency um not too thick and not too watery but really 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 good you do not need anything else of this um garlic chunky garlic mashed potato recipe because it's flavorful you can taste the garlic um i let the, i like to let the garlic brown as, you, as as you've seen in most of my cooking recipes let it brown a little bit so that the flavor is uh, packed in there my light is in the bay so um, so, yeah, I leave the peels on there. You get potassium and all the other nutrients that you're supposed to get probably from the little bitty of um, peels on there. It's also a lazy person's way of making mashed potatoes, right? And um, I just use the uh, a new sponge, seam sponge to scrub them clean, of course. I don't think that was all relevant for me to show you all that part. Look at that. I like Japanese breadcrumbs because it gives it a golden um, a consistency. I shallow fried them in peanut oil. Mm -hmm. Pretty good, very moist, crunchy on the outside. Um, you can tell you can't, but I can. Yeah. The seasonings came through there. And look, you don't have to dip it in flour and egg and breadcrumbs. You can do one or the other.
There, got me a knife. I know. I could be using my hands as a finger food. I get it. I get it, I get it, I get it. So how are you doing today? I know I probably asked you that earlier. What's going on with you? Was your day productive today? So what books are you reading this far? This far. You also forgot their fork. Channel. Warm up. There we go. Got it. Got it. Settled. Yeah, hey, what books are you reading this year? Or what's on your reading list? Or what have you read so far for the year? how hot my chicken is. I don't like eating cold chicken, so I don't warm it up a little bit. Now, we warm things up. Well, I know I warm things up and I usually overdo it. And then I have to sit there and wait for it to cool down. Steamy, steamy, steamy. Or what movies are you going to go watch this month? Or what movies have you watched at the theaters? I have to look at trailers. I haven't, for this year, I haven't looked at any trailers to see what's really going on out here in the streets. I know guys, I can use my hands, but now I got a for real for real excuse. The chicken is piping hot. Okay. Piping. Pipage hottage. Oh. They go to utensil.
Don't talk about me and my fork usage for my chicken. Don't do it, fam. Don't do it. You know there's a special person in each and every family. And that's me. That's me. That's your girl right here. If it wasn't hot, I would be, you know, going to town. Going to town for that bone marrow. You hear me? The bone marrow. So this year, y'all gotta pray for your girl. This year, one of my goals, not what do you call them? What are they called? What's the yearly things people do? What are they called? New Year's resolution. No, no, no. That's one of my goals is to go and attend. I took a Pilates class back in the day. It was cool. But I said this year I'm gonna go. I found a like Christian yoga place last year. So last year, excuse me. So I wanted to go check it out, and I don't know if any one of you are like I am with new spaces. People call it funny acting, but I just—I mean, I found this place last year. Okay. Okay. Yes, I was like, I'm going to start taking yoga. You know, when I left my uh, career, my calendar was empty. So it was crazy that I'm starting to realize is, you know, when you're working, I've been working ever since I was 16, right? For over 20 years now, over 20 years. And so leaving the workforce, you know, before leaving the workforce and when I was in my career, I, that's when I started writing. I've been writing for 10 years. But I used to say, oh, I wish I had so much time to write. I just want to write. I just want to do this full time. And I left because then when I have an empty calendar, okay, okay. And I'm the main obligation, my husband and I. So I'm filling it up like when I immediately left, I was like, I'm going to do yoga. I'm going to go to spin class. I'm a to girl. Well, first of all, one day I'll tell you all the story about a girl. No, I'm just kidding. But I'll tell you all my story because the first six months, that's just all we're going to say. But other than that, so <laughs> it's been, well, no, that's a lie. I left my job in on June the 1st, 2018. So I spent the whole 2019, I didn't even go to a yoga class. Girl, so I'm an introvert. You wouldn't believe it just by seeing me on camera, okay? You wouldn't. Um, when I go to new places or places where I don't know anybody, I don't know. Of course, you feel out of place. I don't care what kind of place it is. I mean, I do. So that's why I probably just like, because I try to get myself, try to get my husband to go. I'm Mr. M. I said, dude, let's go to a yoga class. He was like, what? <laughs> what? I'm like, come on, dude. And what's weird is, it's not that I'm afraid to do things by myself. I've always been like, ever since I was like 26 and up, when I detached from codependency after a traumatic event, I learned how to just be self-sufficient and just 
I'll go to movies, I'll go eat out by myself, even up to today, I'll go sit in a restaurant by myself. I'll do stuff by myself, okay? I will freaking take a ride, a long ride by myself, just to think. But when I have to go to like spaces with people, like the yoga class, for instance, like I'm like, I don't know those people, you know? And um, and I know it's just like, just go, stop making that an excuse, just go. But then it's like, I'm the type of person, and y'all gotta pray for me, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> uh, since also, you know, self-evaluation sometimes is very detrimental. Because I know, I said, I, 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 by now, as grown as I am, I should have somewhat come out of that shell, but I, it's, I don't, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I'm the type of person, like, that's how bad it is. Like, if I'm invited to a party or a gathering, I have to really like my best friend or somebody that, who's going to be there. If I have to go somewhere that I have to go and I know absolutely no one, of course I'm going to go kicking and screaming. And then when I'm there, I'm going to be the person sitting down somewhere in a corner watching people because I love to people watch. I might be, I'm gonna, am I going to be having a good time? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be having a good time. I just, it takes me a while to, to warm up to things. I think I get it from my dad. Now, what's weird is back in my drinking days, oh, I was an extrovert. I was going wherever the party was, loud. I was making sure I was the party. But after the drinking days, <laughs> I became more sort of a homebody. I love being at home. Um, I, we always laugh with my husband and I were like, we're boring people, really we are. We watch movies, do a lot of cooking from home, uh, this like having the, to do the mukbang has been fun because we kind of rekindle with getting food from fast foods and stuff like that. But other than that, like, I don't know. Hey, okay, so let's say for a typical weekend, my husband and I, he's in, he calls it his studio of God, doing his music thing. I'm in, I call my place, my space, the lab, doing my thing, whether it's writing, reading. Or watching YouTube, right? I mean, I'm kind of, you know, what used to scare me when I was younger, because I was one of them. But I, I retired partying, like at 20, literally, like at 26, 27, if the memory serves me correctly. But it was about that time. I was, it was after 25. Um, I was done with the scene, with the going out scene and all that other stuff, because I, I started restarting. Me, and my best friend, started doing it really, really young. Um, clubbing, partying, just being out there, walling out. But I used to say though, like I remember, like would be when we're out, probably when I was like probably 21, 20, because it was like an everyday thing. We'd go out every almost now. My best friend, we would live separate states, but I had friends in Southern California, and so we'd go out every single time. And I used to be so scared because, like, when you go out to places like the club and nightlife, you see older crowds, mature crowds. And I was like, I hope I'm not in like in my 60s and going out. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just me as an individual because it was like an everyday habit. So I was like, man, something got to change at some point in time. You know, not wrong with the older uh, folks going to have a good time. It's just me at that time because the way we were moving around. So that's why I see all that. It says so amazing how everything just changes. Total homebody. Total homebody. I like the comfort of my home. God bless my late pastor's wife. She was amazing. She used to be the one that's like, let's go here. Let's go here. You know. And I would go with her. But other than that, homebody. Got lots of friends. Lots of friends, lots of associates out here in the Midwest. 
homebody. I just, I, I love the comfort of my home. And then, so I say all that to say, when I left the workforce, I was like, I'm going to join a writing group. I'm a, uh, these are running group I signed up for. 2018, win 2020 now, y'all. Uh, man, I put all this stuff to, to, to try and fill up my little calendar, but I never stepped foot to any one of these groups. And I'm saying all that is happening. No, am I the only person that's like funny acting when it comes to going to like events where you don't know anybody? Is that a thing? And it's not like, one, don't even think, I don't feel like I'm too good to be any place. It's just, my personality it's like i am i just like shrivel up when i go to places where i don't know anybody and that's why it's always interesting is because i know i'm a bona fide introvert trust and believe that but then i have no problem being in front of the camera i have no problem conducting conversations with strangers um like you know if you're in the grocery store in a, in a line and stuff like that I have no problem um, speaking in front of an audience live. So I'd be like, God, what's up with that? But when it comes to an environment I'm not familiar with, I just shrink. And then I watch. You know, it never used to be like that in my life. It never used to be like that. However, however, I shied away from big crowds. Um, in my entire life, I've been to one concert, and that is when I had a coworker who came out from Oklahoma, and he wanted to go to the Kid Rock concert. He didn't know anybody here. And um, I wasn't doing anything per use. He got the tickets. We went. That was my first concert I'd ever been to my whole entire life. Am I a Kid Rock fan? Oh. But I went to accompany my coworker, you know, and I, because I, I knew that feeling of relocating to a new state and you don't know anybody. I did it, right? And so he kind of trying to acclimate. I'm probably just wanted, he just wanted to go out and have a good time. But it was like the seas of bodies. I don't hyperventilate, I don't breathe. I've always said, I don't think it's like social anxiety. But it's just that I can't with the big bodies of people. Let me see, because I'm not saying that's the only concept. That's kind of sad, ain't it? But like, I'm not phased. I'm not like, oh, I got to go. I just don't do crowds. I don't do crowds well. Do I want to be around a crowd? Maybe. If I, I don't know. I know it's too much. It's just too much. No, thank you. We're not going to tell that lie here. Um... Let me see. We went to, um, they had a free wine and music festival out here. My husband loves music. We went for the free concert and we made sure we got there to get good parking. And we wanted to make sure we left at a decent time so we wouldn't be stuck in the crowds because I just, I can't, it was, and then it wasn't like a big full stadium concert because it was like a neighborhood thing. But they had all these artists coming from out of town, which was kind of cool. Jazz and something, that's what it was, jazz and something. My husband plays the guitar, so we went. It was chill, it was cool. Um, Let me see. Let me see how sad my life is. <laughs> but no, I say all that to say, guys, 2020, hmm? yoga class? I don't know. I'm going to tell you if I make that stride. 
And then the thing with me is like once I get it and kind of, you know, when I warm up, probably after three, four, five classes, when I warm up to the people, it'll become habit. And I'll be comfortable. That's just one quirky thing about me that I don't really like. I wish I could just navigate my way around. My best friend, she's an extrovert. Hey girl, how you doing? Mm -hmm. all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You know what I mean? I love people, I'm a people person, but like I said, in a crowd, I'll probably be the quiet one. In a room full of unknown people, I'll, my husband's the say he's quiet too. We, we, we married like people in this house. We really did, we always laugh about that. So, and what was interesting, that's when years ago, because it bothered me so much, I started doing research on myself and came across the um, intuitive empath. And I started researching about that. And I'm like, well, I don't like big crowds. And my energy be drained after I've been around a big crowd. I like the da -da -da, da -da -da -da, process of elimination. Maybe it's undiagnosed social anxiety. Who knows? My, I don't feel like my heart changes a beat. It's just I'm just be reserved and just. Mm -hmm. Now we get to the meat and potatoes of the whole chicken bone. And I'm saying. I don't know. And then when I'm around my mom, my mom, she's probably, yeah, you know what? I'm like my dad. My mom's an ex uh, extrovert. She is. My mom knows no stranger. Everywhere she goes, she's the same. Hey, 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 Everywhere she goes. So every time when I go visit my parents or when I'm around my mom, my mom will fly out here to the Midwest to where I'm at. Okay, like she did the last time. Let's go to Kansas. Let's go. Blah, blah, blah. Let's go. Blah, blah, blah. I know that. Do you know that? No, I don't. No. Oh, that's your auntie, right? From nowhere. Why? I've been here for a long time. She know people everywhere she goes. Oh, how she? How does she do that? Definitely my father's daughter in that aspect. Definitely. My papa, he's good just being at home, chilling on the couch, falling asleep, watching CNN. Me, what's up with that? Me, not so much watching CNN, but I'm good at home. That was weird. It must not have been important. Don't get me wrong, I love to travel. I love to travel. Just because we are homebodies don't mean we don't like to travel. I like being a homebody. But I also like being in new cultures, spaces where it's new. Not necessarily like leaving here, going to Chicago for a conference where I don't know anybody. That's not the traveling. 
but the trap that I'm talking about. But I'm talking about leaving here, just taking a drive down to Chicago for a weekend in a hotel, seeing sightseeing, and coming back to town. That's the travel that I'm talking about. I guess when I grow up one day, I'll come up out of my shell. You guys, my skin's so dry, it's so itchy. <laughs> my sister said I need to go get a Cerna. I've never experienced that. I'm like scratching the crap out of myself. She said Cerna. Oh, the Vaseline ain't working. I never had this issue before. Ah. Who else choose the bone marrow straight, clean, clear up, up out of the chicken? Hmm? You want some marrow? Some bone marrow? Got all the nutrients. Okay. Mm. Yes, honey. I don't know what's going on. I had to make a trip to freaking. Look at that. It don't make no sense. I don't know if you can see it, but I've been scratching the crap out of myself. Mmm. Mm. Mm. That one spit on camera, guys. Come on now. Dang, sis. Mm. Probably if I had the aloe vera point. I'm like, did I eat something I wasn't supposed to eat? What I do? Mm. I mean, really, though. Mm -mm, no bone left behind. With my mom around the table, she'd be like, Give me a plate, give me a plate. And be like, They ain't nothing on this bone no more. Get to them bones, girl. Mm -mm. This is how you eat chicken. And this piece right here, oh. And this little piece here is your toothpick. You save that for later. Save that for later. Yes, honey. Crack them bones. You heard me. By one end off first, and by the next end off. Mm -hmm. 
I had a coworker, and I'm not knocking how people eat their chicken. I just don't waste no chicken. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying they're wasting. Don't get me, don't get it twisted. I just, this is just natural habit. You finish something on a bone, you go for the bone if the bone edible or not. You know what I'm saying? But I had a coworker when we got wings, she would like, you know, the little drumettes, she would just, uh, like an apple, just go right around the little thick part, and that was it. I'm like, oh, all that stuff, all that meat down underneath the chunky part, wasting all that. No ma'am. No ma'am. You gotta get your knife. Go in right, get this little bone piece out so I could get the marrow. This is what you're going for, the marrow. Uh, yes, ma'am. That's why these teeth they're strong. It's years of bone chewing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And digging into marrow. Yeah. Wipe that bone clean, clear. Out that marrow. No marrow left behind, honey. What? Say what? In 2020? No marrow left behind. I don't know, fam. Don't hold me up to it. We'll see if sis is going to do that yoga class she's been talking about. She's probably going to get to it. The way my life is set up. In 2021 or 2022. So I should make that a goal, maybe, huh? A focus. Step out into the unknown. Go and be among thy strangers. I'll let you guys know. I will. I will. Now that I've spoken about it, I'm like, ah, oh, now I gotta go do it. Now I gotta do it. But I didn't say what I'm gonna do it. Thank you so much for watching, family. I love you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much I for do watching. watching, family. Don't forget to subscribe, share this video. No, no, no. No. <laughs> no. Hit the thumbs up, girl. No. What is wrong with you, girl? Nothing. Girl, talk to him. Excuse me. Talk to myself a lot. Don't forget to thumbs up. Share this video. Hit on the notification bell. Subscribe if you have not subscribed. To those that have subscribed, I truly, 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 truly appreciate you. Even if you haven't subscribed and you like watching this content, heck, I love you too. I love every single one of you for it. Invest in your time with me. That's it. And camera off.